Welcome back to Obermatt Stock Investing. Today we are investing in Italy. That's at least is my target. The Milano Stock Exchange has uh, stock 10, uh, top 10 stocks on the Obermatt web page. Let's have a look at what we have here. And I want to have a look at the combined, the combined uh, investment strategy because here I have the companies that fulfill many criteria at the same time. What I lo I'm looking for is good value. We have gas utilities, casino, we have Generali insurance, we have Pirelli, Atlantia with 271, it's a little bit on the border, Eni, oil and gas, Luxotica, Fiat, and these two companies don't have really good value. I want to have a look at Fiat, I think that's interesting, automotive industry. I want to look at Pirelli. Uh, because uh, this has, has very good uh, value ratings. I'm not so interested in oil and gas at this moment. I want to look at Atlantia and I don't want to look at Generali because I just, I mean, I'm just in the process of you know, uh, canceling my account there. I'm not interested in casinos and not in gas utilities. So let's have a look at Atlantia. We click on that. We get the stock research from Atlantia. And how does that look? Well, I see something surprising in the value area. We have a very bad uh, price to capital ratio, while we have good price to revenue. So two uh, indicators are contradictory here. I want to verify that. Let's also go further down. I see on the safety side quite bad leverage and as well a pretty good liquidity. Let's verify that with Thomson Reuters. Thomson Reuters, I think, has the best uh, uh, the best analysis on financials on the website, uh, on the web, available for investors. Let's look at Atlantia's uh, valuation ratios. The company has a P ratio of 25 compared to 28. I mean, P should be okay. I don't really know why we have a high P rating, you know, a high uh, P rating of 71. Um, it's not really verifiable with this. Uh, let's go this way to... Um, uh, Reuters. It has um, a price to sales ratio which is more on the expensive side, so that's strange, you know, compared to what Obermott shows, is a price sales ratio that is very, very good, so it should not be on the expensive side. And price to book ratio is more or less a little bit better actually at the industry, more or less where the sector is, whatever that means, um, but price book is not really that bad. So that looks really fishy. You know, the Obermott analysis does, is not in line with Reuters, something I find strange. Let's have a look at the financial strength. If I look at the quick ratio, the current ratio, you know, the liquidity ratios are actually quite good, are actually uh, quite good. You know, that's also something we see at Obermott. If we go down to the safety rated, our liquidity rank is quite good. Let's have a look at the leverage rank leverage rank is actually not that bad. It's a little bit higher than the industry, but it shouldn't actually warrant a really bad rank. So the, the numbers are not in line between Reuters and Obermott, especially not the interest coverage ratio. It looks like they uh, have not much interest coverage, while uh, we, you know, from our liquidity point of view, we should actually uh, be, you know, have the opinion that there is a high liquidity ratio. So something Something is, is fishy here. I'm not going to rest. I'm going to file a report to Daniel, who is in charge of the Obermott algorithm, to see what's wrong with this company. That's something you can do too. You can always give us a call and we'll, um, we'll get back to you uh, and uh, try to identify the problems uh, that, that there were. Okay, let's have a look further. Let's go down to the next company, Pirelli. Let's have a look. You know what Reuters said about says about Pirelia, and the first thing I see there is a, a Chinese company wants to buy it. So that's not really good, you know, point for me to invest because first of all, these takeovers can be quite rocky, and I'm not so sure I want to be in a rocky boat. Second, I want to be in for the long term. If the company gets bought, you know, I have to sell my shares or get shares from the buyer both not very attractive options for me. So Pirelli is out of the picture. Let's look at Fiat. Fiat has, again, good ratios except profits. Profits is really bad. Let's have a look what Reuters says there. I have a look at what they're doing and it seems that they have lots of problems. They're recalling 900,000 SUVs um, from the market. Uh, it looks to me almost like a Volkswagen moment. Let's have a look at what the stock price has done. 
and actually it hasn't done that much really if you look over the past year uh, it has suffered a little bit but not much uh, nevertheless I don't feel that comfortable I went to the fiat website and I remembered that there's a there's a very strong high performance culture at uh, fiat and ever since the Volkswagen scandal and actually also the Enron scandal uh, I have the feeling that too much performance orientation is not that safe I don't want to invest in fiat either so what's left uh, well if I go to the top 10 stocks you know look at what's left here the only thing that looks attractive to me to me is Luxotica because Italy is known for the fashion but if you've been us been with us for a while you remember that Luxotica um, oops, has actually been bought already uh, with this portfolio and the percentage that currently uh, is owned by Luxotica is almost 10% of my portfolio it has increased since we bought it by 5.63% really nice return uh, but there's no reason to buy more Luxotica shares because we don't want to have more than 5% of each stock and since we're still building up our portfolio I want to get other stocks to be on the safe side well, that was it today. We didn't buy stocks. Uh, first, because the numbers looked fishy. In the second case, because the company was bought. And in the third case, because I knew something about the company that didn't make me feel that comfortable. That's also reasons why you can decide not to invest. So I think it was a good opportunity to share with you that there are moments where I'm not buying stocks. Goodbye.